four days, four days without electricity and four days with content. Yeah, I'd like to see PewDiePie do that. Crossy Posse Packer Nation. Welcome to an episode of Packcast, the podcast where you don't have to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom. God, four days without power, and I haven't taken a shower in 26. <laughs> Crazy what happens when you don't have electricity. Grassy, and today we are going to be talking about the Packers wide receiver problem. And before you jump down my throat and say I'm just going on the bandwagon with the media hating on the Packers and the lack of weapons for Aaron Rodgers, I'm not actually even talking about this season. We have talked about this topic ad nauseum on this channel. And I think that the Green Bay Packers will be fine with who they have this year with Alan Lazard, with Devontae Adams, with Jay Sternberger at tight end, with Aaron Jones as a catching running back will be fine. What I'm talking about is more our long-term future. And that's what today's episode is going to be about. Before we get to that, I want to do a big shout and thank you to a brand new YouTube member. We got Real I-N or Real In. Maybe it's a fishing thing, but it's not R-E-E-L. Either way, thank you for money. So this, so I've been wanting to do this episode for a while. And it took four days without electricity for me to be like, you know what, I'm going to sit down and I'm actually just going to do it. I'm going to write it all out. And this is also prompted by, we talked about this a little bit yesterday, Antonio Brown, analysts saying that Antonio Brown should go to the Packers. He would give Aaron Rodgers a great weapon to throw to, yada, 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 yada. And a lot of things that fans and analysts and reporters have said are focusing on the short term. They're saying, bring in a vet like Antonio Brown, a Taylor Gabriel, you know, any one of these guys, or spend some high draft capital on a guy who could come in immediately and make a difference. Now, I know the Packers didn't draft a wide receiver, and I'm not going to sit here and pretend that if they drafted a wide receiver, that wouldn't help their team, because I think it would. But I will say... It is a bit rare for a wide receiver to come out of college and immediately make an impact. Not to say it doesn't happen, because it definitely does, but usually they need a year or so, right, to kind of get into the groove of things. So even if we went in the first round this year and drafted a wide receiver, there was no guarantee that it was going to help out this year. Instead, what today's episode is going to focus on is the fact that there isn't a ton of depth at wide receiver, how that is going to impact the Packers' immediate and long-term future at the position. And if we're going to talk about Packers wide receivers, we have to start with, you know, their best one, Devontae Adams. Now, Devontae Adams got his four-year extension in December of 2017, Four years, $58 million, which, by the way, steal of the century. Now, what that means is in 2022, and I want you to remember that date, in 2022, he will be an unrestricted free agent and will be 29 years old. And before we get to anything else, we need to focus primarily on that. Do the Packers re-sign Devontae Adams? And you might be sitting there, you know, pooping right now, looking at your forum going, Tom, of course we're going to re-sign him. Similar to how I said earlier this year before the draft, are we going to re-sign Aaron Jones? And everyone jumped down my throat and said, Tom, of course we are. And now that's thrown into jeopardy here because, you know, it's going to be very, very expensive. Of course, we drafted A.J. Dillon, etc. But with Devontae Adams, the reason I ask, are we going to resign him or not, is, has nothing to do with his talent because the guy is an amazing wide receiver. It has to do with the amount of money it's going to cost for him, and on top of that, he's going to be 29 years old. Because it does need to be mentioned that as you get older in the NFL, especially at receiver, your productivity eventually is going to decrease. You look at some of the top wide receivers right now in the NFL, and let's take a look at their ages. 
Michael Thomas, 27. Tyreek Hill, 26. DeAndre Hopkins, 28. Chris Godwin, 24. Mike Evans, 26. A.J. Brown, 23. Amari Cooper, 26. Galladay, 26. OBJ, 27. Metcalf, 22. And once you start getting older, it's not that there's, you know, nobody that's talented. You look at Antonio Brown, who's 32 years of age. Larry Fitzgerald's 36. He's definitely an outlier. Edelman is 34. And of course, Julio Jones is 31 years of age. Now, with all that being said, Julio Jones, I would argue out of that list that I just said of guys over 30 are still quote unquote elite. Once you hit 30, things start to decrease a little bit. The peak age for a wide receiver is usually anywhere between 26 to 28. And then there's usually a drop off. Yes, is that a generalization? Absolutely. Can Devontae Adams defy the odds? Absolutely. But besides the age thing, you also have to look at them getting a third contract. You look at a guy like Jordy Nelson, right, who played 10 years for the Packers. He got cut when he was 32 because, listen, I love Jordy to death. His play did decline. Yes, of course, the guy throwing him the ball, you know, could have been better, but he did decline. Randall Cobb. We cut him before he was even 30. He did not get that third contract with the Green Bay Packers. So the point that I'm making is there is no guarantee that we are going to re-sign Devontae Adams. Now, the Packers may be forced to re-sign him because of the issues I'm going to bring up in this video, but at the moment, I wouldn't take it for granted that it's definitely going to happen because of his age, because of the money that it's going to take. And honestly, what would a contract look like? I don't know if they're going to give him another four years playing until he is 33 years old. I would think it's going to be a shorter term contract and maybe because of that, he would go elsewhere. In addition, it most likely won't be Aaron Rodgers throwing to him after his contract expires. Something to think about. Now, Devontae Adams is not the only one we have to think about, though. Look at MVS. MVS, a guy who has struggled, most definitely, his rookie deal expires in 2022, the same as Devontae Adams. And MVS, he was older when we drafted him, he will be 27 years of age. And so when I've been saying that this is kind of the last year for MVS to really shine, I'm not kidding, because I I don't know if they're even going to extend him after this. And if they do, I don't think it's going to be a long-term deal unless he just explodes. But MBS basically has this season to really wow the coaches in the front office, or I think that he's going to suffer the Jamon Moore effect and get cut. Equinemius St. Brown, he is going to be a free agent in 2022. Now, when that happens, he will be 25 years old. EQ... Obviously, the jury is still out, you know, showed some flashes of rookie season, was completely out last year due to injury. I am pretty much hyped on EQ, and I hope that comes to fruition. But if EQ just blows up over these next two years, and let's just say he becomes the next Devontae Adams, well, he's going to need another contract as well. And it would make sense to sign him to a longer term deal, like a four year contract, because he'll only be 25 years old. Then you have Alan Lazard, who is just being signed on a one year deal. So next year, he will be a restricted free agent and he will also only be 25 years old. So Alan Lazard, who a lot of fans are putting a lot of stock in, and listen, he definitely impressed last season, especially considering he was pulled off the practice squad. He's an undrafted guy. Coming into his third year now, basically, they're just like, here you go. Here's the number two spot. Go and take it. Especially that Devin Funches decided to opt out. But what I'm saying is Alan Lazard, if he does really, really well, I doubt he's going to take another one-year deal, meaning they're going to have to re-sign him for a longer deal, costing more money. So basically, this video is moot if... EQ or Alan Lazard go to become superstars and prove that they can be wide receiver ones. That's a big if, though, and that's what this video is talking about. Devin Funches opting out this year will be a free agent in 2022. He'll be 28 years old. Maybe they sign him to a three-year deal if he does really well. Again, a very big if. Reggie Bagleton signed on until 2023. In 2023, though, he will be 30 years old. I doubt he's going to get re-signed after that point because, again, after 30, things start going downhill. Jay Kumaro, on a one-year deal, is a restricted free agent in 2021, and the guy is already 28 years old. So, again, up there in age. Malik Taylor, who they brought in, one-year deal, he's 24. We know nothing about him. So, honestly, I, I don't know what to say about Malik Taylor. He didn't really do anything. So, 
we're a wait and see on him, but he's a one-year deal. Darius Shepard, he's on a one-year deal. He is going to be an exclusive rights-free agent in 2021. So basically what this is looking like is that there is going to be an exodus of wide receivers in either 2021 or 2022. And the problem is right now, there is no surefire answer of who is going to step up and take that WR1 spot. Now, again, this is where we go back to Devontae Adams, in which the Packers may be forced to re-sign him to a contract because they don't have any other options. Now, of course, the option exists that they have to draft a wide receiver in 2021, which I think puts them in a really bad spot. Because again, when you're drafting for need, that's when things become potentially a problem. You might reach on a guy and you're also putting a lot of eggs in one basket. Now, if they decide to draft a wide receiver, let's just say in the second round, because he doesn't need to be in the first round, look at Randall Cobb, look at Jordy Nelson, look at Devontae Adams, hell, look at Donald Driver if you really want to. That player will then have two full seasons to learn behind a guy like Devontae Adams, and then again, this video is moot. But basically, what I'm trying to tell you is that the Packers have a window in which I would say it's probably next year where either one, a guy on the team will have to emerge as the heir to Devontae Adams' WR1 spot, or they are going to have to draft someone, pray that they work out to eventually take that spot. Because again, while the Packers seem to be shifting to being a running team, they are still going to need passing threats. And again, you have Jay Sternberger, who they drafted. Of course, you got DeGuerra in here. A.J. Dillon can supposedly catch the ball. And of course, Aaron Jones is really good at that. But who knows if Aaron Jones is going to be on this team next year. And who knows how a lot of these guys who arguably are untested or have a lack of experience and, you know, what have you done for me lately, it raises some concerns here. Now, back in the 2018 draft, the Packers kind of went all in. They got Jamon Moore, they got EQ, and they got MBS. Moore is out the door, that rhymed. And then you, of course, have EQ and MBS, two big question marks. We'll see how EQ does this year. And again, he could be our guy. We're just putting a lot of trust in the fact that we drafted well. And what this information also shows is that bringing in a 32-year-old Antonio Brown is not a long-term solution. Maybe, and that's a big maybe, you get two or three years out of him and maybe he doesn't completely lose his crap. And maybe that's enough to win a Super Bowl. Who, then that, those are the best case scenarios. But again, we then look at 2022 in which we're back in the same spot and is essentially a rebuild at that position. So it's basically to sum this up, the Packers have to pray that a guy like MVS, which gives me some hesitancy, an EQ or a Lazard step up and not only show that they could be a good wide receiver two, but that they could be a good wide receiver one. Because if they don't, they are going to be forced to draft a wide receiver next year or bring in a young free agent who is going to probably cost them a bunch of money or they are going to be forced to re-sign Devontae Adams. And again, Devontae Adams on this team playing into his 30s might not be a bad thing. But if father time has shown us anything, is that it eventually comes for us all. And at 29 years old, after his contract expires, that's right around the age. So while everyone's talking about the potential wide receiver problem that the Packers might have this year, it might be a bigger problem two years from now. But... Let me know what you think down in the comments below. You can always find me at TomGrossyComedy.com or at TomGrossyComedy on all social media. See down below. Check out podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Spotify, and of course YouTube. And a big shout out and thank you to all the patrons over at Patreon.com slash TomGrossyComedy and the YouTube members. We'll be streaming tonight at 7 p.m. Eastern, so hope to see you there. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, Go Pack Go! <laughs>